Hi, and welcome everyone to the Oriental Bird Club webinar. I'm Vivian Fu. I'm from Hong Kong and the campaigns officer for the Oriental Bird Club. It is great to see so many OBC members and non-members attending today's webinar. And um, this is the fifth OBC webinar from our series. And perhaps many of you have joined our previous webinars, such as um, on the Spoonbill Sandpiper, the Black Browed Bubbler, the Asians Missing Birds. Um, if you missed them, you can also rewatch these inspiring webinars on the OBC YouTube channel. You can find the link of this YouTube channel in the um, uh, chat box. Um, OBC is not only a bird interest group, but it's also now actively supporting conservation in the Oriental region. We have a conservation team led by Paul Inser Kao, and this team helps to accelerate OBC's conservation work and bringing a lot of amazing impact. By focusing our funding on conservation, uh, conserving threatened species, encouraging rediscovery of uh, missing birds and species lack of information. The latest publication of the Birding Asia, the BA37, which has been just sent out, will highlight some of the areas where we have been active. If you join OBC as a member, you can get this publication for free. So a link of how to join you OBC as a member will be placed in the chat, chat box as well. OBC also working closely with partners like, uh, such as BirdLife International and the Asian Songbird Trade Specialist Group. So OBC does not operate as in isolation, but synergizing our efforts as part of the bigger conservation picture. For your information, we have increased our grants from less than $29,000 uh, in 1999 to uh, over 75,000 in the year of 2020. So if you want to help our conservation work, please make a donation. And again, the link can be found in the chat box. We have some recent great examples of how OBC is helping the Asian songbird crisis in, in Indonesia. We supported um, captive breeding programs community education and protection efforts for threatened island species. And today we are bringing you two examples of songbird conservation work that OBC has supported. In, ad in, in addition to these two projects um, on the Asian Songbird Trade Specialist Group, um, to kick things off, we have also news of the exciting publication of an Indonesian language bird guide to bring to you at the end. Before we start, I would like to remind you several things. First of all, please uh, keep your microphone turned off so that we won't have the uh, unnecessary, unnecessary background noise. We expect this webinar to last for an, about an hour. Um, depending on the Q&A, we may go a little bit over, but please um, stay with us um, for the Q&A section as well. We hope to have enough time for several questions at the end. So um, please feel free to post your comments and questions um, via the chat, and you can find the speech bubble icon at the bottom of the Zoom app, um, and you can leave the message and comments there. And now, without further ado, I would like to uh, firstly introduce uh, Ria Sarianti from Burong, Indonesia. Um, Burong, Indonesia is the bird life partners in Indonesia. Yanti is also the OB, OBC country representative for Indonesia and sits on the OBC Songsbird group. She will be facilitating the webinar for us today and introducing the speakers. So over to you, Yanti. Okay, thank you very much, uh, Vivian. So good morning and uh, good afternoon, uh, everyone. Uh, as uh, Vivian mentioned before, my name is uh, Ria Sarianti. You can call me Yanti. Currently, I'm uh, working for Burung Indonesia and supporting uh, the OBC Songbird Conservation uh, Committee or group. Uh, before we listen to the presentations today, I just want to give uh, some information about the funding uh, from the OBC uh, grant. So, in 2021, we approved uh, funding from uh, 17 projects in nine uh, countries, totaling uh, 
to 45,000 uh, pounds. And the OBC has uh, defined a set of uh, priority for uh, grant funding. So we believe that this uh, criteria is uh, not uh, exclusive, but they are uh, help uh, guide us until now. So uh, in OBC, there are two groups of birds that uh, the OBC give a particular attention uh, to. Uh, first is migratory shorebirds, and the second one is the songbird. So OBC now has a songbird group uh, to help uh, coordinate coordinate better support to the issue within OBC and with organization. So as you know that Indonesia is one of the most uh, avian diverse countries in the world, and I believe that it's number one in Asia. So high number project funded from uh, OBC in Indonesia and the OBC uh, funding until now and especially in 2021 uh, give a direct uh, impact of bene or benefit to 17 uh, globally threatened species uh, in, uh, in Indonesia through the project. And uh, in 2000, uh, 2021, OBC has a fund, uh, funding project in uh, 14 countries, and this uh, also uh, a lot of a uh, project is still ongoing until now. Now we will move to the presentation. So first, I would like to invite uh, Seren uh, Ching from uh, Asian Songbird Trade uh, Specialist Group. So Siren, time is for you. Uh, I hope that you can give in uh, five, five minutes. Uh, that is yours, uh, Siren. Thank you very much. Uh, I'm just going to share my screen so you can see. Okay, hi everyone, good afternoon, um, and thank you for inviting me to speak. Uh, I'll just give a short introduction to the Asian Songbird Trade Specialist Group, um, and I'm one of the co-coordinators. Okay, so um, the Asian Songbird Trade Specialist Group was established in May 2017, um, and this there was a conservation strategy containing recommendations and action points from the first Songbird Crisis Summit, and this was published in 2016. And this conservation strategy pretty much guides uh, the specialist group's priorities. And as you know, the Asian songbird trade issue is complex and multifaceted. And there's lots of excellent organizations and individuals who are working on this already. So what the specialist group aims to do is to create synergy by bringing together the subject matter experts from different fields um, and to try and facilitate these efforts. So the main objectives are to prevent the extinction of Asian songbirds that are threatened by unsustainable trapping and trade, and to address the impact of the trade and to find, try and find solutions. And one of the things that we also do is um, pr provide updated information and recommendations for the IUCN Red List status assessments. Um, and on that note, I wanted to talk very briefly about the priority taxa list. So we have uh, a new priority taxa list that was just updated in April this year. And the main purpose is to identify and highlight the taxa that are most threatened by trade so that they can be prioritized for future conservation interventions, for research and for funding. Uh, and in this iteration of the list, we are using a taxa instead of a species list so that we can recognize unique conservation units, which include subspecies or subpopulations, which are threatened by trade. So even if they are not threatened at the species level, or even if they're not officially recognized to be a separate species. Uh, and each taxon is assessed to have met certain criteria, including uh, the fact that trade is a main threat to the survival of this particular taxon. So this list would exclude um, taxa, which are encountered in trade, but the main threat is something else. And secondly, uh, it includes taxa where populations are known or believed to be declining, experiencing local extinctions or already very rare in the wild. So this excludes taxa that are traded at sustainable levels. 
Um, and we aim for this list to be a living list and to be constantly updated as new research and new information becomes available. Um, this list has a two-tier system. The first tier uh, includes 43 taxa whose survival are most urgently impacted by trade and are considered to be top priority for conservation actions. And you can see highlighted here are uh, the two species or two taxa which will be featured in today's talks and both of them are considered tier 1 high priority taxa. And tier 2 are the watch list where we have 25 taxa that we know are present in trade um, but we're not exactly sure how severe the impacts on wild populations are or how large the volumes of trade are. So these are taxa where more research and monitoring is required. So within the specialist group, we've got five main thematic areas that broadly encompass the type of work that's done by the members. And the first one is the field research group, uh, which includes population monitoring and basically determining how trade affects wild populations. And also um, helps to identify and identify important sites for priority species so that they can be safeguarded. And the genetic research group uh, focuses on identifying genetically distinct conservation units. And these would be used to guide conservation actions um, and also to help to um, provide more detail and guidance for breeding programs. I'll talk a bit more about education and community engagement in the next slide. Um, the fourth group is the conservation breeding and reintroduction group. So in this group, uh, the focus is to develop conservation or ex situ uh, programs to establish husbandry and disease management protocols with the ultimate aim of um, reintroducing uh, species back into the wild. And last but certainly not least is the trade and legislation group where uh, monitoring of the levels and the types of trade that happens goes on. And there's also um, an objective to improve national and international legal protection for priority species and also to support the effective regulation and law enforcement effort. And even though there's these five subgroups, uh, I think it's important to note that there's a lot of work that's cross-cutting across multiple groups. So um, some of you may have heard of some conservation initiatives involving the Barusan Sharma, and this covers you know, multiple groups. There's field research, genetic research, community-based conservation, and also conservation breeding that's included. So I will talk a bit more about education and community engagement because uh, this is what the, these two projects um, that are going to be presented today uh, are about. So the specialist groups, um, education and community engagement sub-theme um, recognizes that people are a very important part of this whole picture. So especially the stakeholders who are involved in the trade themselves. So that's why we actually say that this subgroup has the widest coverage and the biggest challenge. So the first thing um, we aim to do is to understand the social, cultural and economic aspects of the songbird trade. And it's important to note that these will vary across different countries or even part, different parts of the country and different contexts. So once we have that understanding, then it's possible to develop more targeted actions to educate and to change the behaviour of communities and of the actors who are involved, to try and engage and motivate the stakeholders to shift towards sustainable practices. So some of these approaches could involve uh, demand reduction campaigns for bird keepers or working with bird keeping associations or bird singing competition organisers or supporting um, trappers to shift towards more sustainable alternative livelihood activities or having more community-based conservation. And this is what our speakers will be talking about today. Um, and to end off, if you want to know more about the specialist group and some of the initiatives um, and the work that the members have done, here's our website. Um, we also have newsletters, webinar recordings, and various papers and resources available. And we are also on social media where we share news and updates from some of our members' work. Okay, thank you. And I think that was five minutes. Okay, thank you very much, Siren. So if uh, you have uh, any questions or, uh, you know, uh, need uh, some uh, clarifications, uh, you can uh, hold first and, uh, or you can also uh, write on the chat box uh, and we will uh, 
have the answer when we have a question and answer uh, session after the whole presentation. Okay, thank you, Sirin. And now we will uh, go to the other uh, presenter. Uh, I would like to invite uh, Irfan Rosiadi uh, from Canopy Indonesia that uh, he will uh, share their uh, <clears throat> work from Jatimulyo village in Yogyakarta. So Irfan, uh, you have a time now and please keep uh, 10 minutes uh, if possible. Thank you. Irfan, yeah, time is here. You. Thank you, Mbak Yanti. I will share my presentation now. Uh, everyone, my name is Irfan. I'm from Kanopi, Indonesia. Uh, this is a local NGO in, in Yogyakarta, which is uh, concerned in biodiversity conservation and also community development. And uh, I'm going to share uh, our conservation work in Jatimulyo to conserve uh, threatened songbird species in, uh, with the local community. And our target species is including Japan blue play catcher, um, which is now proposed uh, as a critical endangered species, as the species is under process to be split from the wider um, spread of a hill blue play catcher. And the second is brown chick bulbul. <laughs> Uh, it's this uh, endangered bird species that is uh, beginning uh, for most in captivity for pet and also as a master bird in a uh, bird contest and also uh, sangkar white eye that formerly common uh, but is now almost vanished in almost uh, all habitat and uh, the last is Arabi throated bulbul, which is also vulnerable due to hunting or trap activity. And the location is in Jatimulyo village. It's in uh, Kirimulyo subdistrict in uh, Kulon Progo Regency. It is uh, about 25 kilometers from the uh, Yogyakarta city or about one hour from the city or from the uh, airport. And the study area, the, our uh, site is in uh, Menoreh Mountain landscape, which is dominated by um, agroforest. And, and the local government has issued a purdes, uh, which uh, one of the capture is uh, prohibiting bird, poach, uh, bird poaching activity. And in this uh, village, uh, there is a local organization, namely Katehawana Paksi, uh, which the, uh, the member, uh, some of the member is a poacher, which is active uh, to conserve bird by adopting uh, the nest. This adoption, uh, this began uh, in 2016, uh, initiated by uh, Yayasan Putilang Indonesia. Uh, you can see in the detail in uh, Taufiq Rahman publication in Birding Asia in 2019. And uh, Canopy Indonesia uh, has officially been working in the Chatimulyo since uh, 2018. And uh, we contributed to the establishment of Katehawana Paksi, which is formerly was called uh, MPBG. It's uh, the Jatimulyo Birdwatching Community. And our activity in this project are uh, birding survey, bird survey to support baseline data for the nest adoption program. And then, uh, we did promotion for the nest adoption scheme through facilitation of the SOP construction and also 
uh, with training and etc. And also we did uh, a strengthened enforcement of the village regulation through communication network scheme, construction and agreement. And now we talk about the survey we conducted two time. The first is in 2020. This is uh, was conducted by uh, our team, uh, consists of uh, uh, our team and uh, the Trinet enumerator from Kate Hawana Paksi and uh, University. Uh, and this uh, project, uh, this survey uh, has listed uh, about 61 bird species. Um, and um, this include uh, three of uh, the threatened species. And the next is in 2021 to 2022, we uh, also conducted uh, participatory bird monitoring that is conduct conducted uh, uh, monthly, uh, one uh, per month. Uh, from the November to June uh, using encounter rate, but uh, this survey was execute, uh, uh, executed uh, not as systematic as the first survey. If the first survey is so systematically uh, uh, methodology with the encounter rate, this is still um, less uh, systematic because this involving the local community when uh, with most of them uh, is it was first time for them to observe bird, and uh, oper uh, and we has um, listed about sixty five uh, bird species from the survey with it, with uh, various uh, abundance, and this call, uh, include uh, four uh, threatened bird species. And uh, our result from the two survey, uh, we got uh, we have managed to list about seventy eight bird species with uh, various abundance. Uh, we and I have managed uh, all um, uh, triton song bird species, and the sorted list uh, of the triton species are um, most of them are in small abundance. Um, uh, com uncommon and uh, uncommon is uh, but uh, at least uh, rapid throated bulbul, which is uh, common and frequent. So um, this uh, one is uh, more common than the other threaten uh, some species. And uh, also our next uh, activity is promoting nest adoption. Uh, the nest adoption was initiated by Kutilang Indonesia in 2016. And the concept is when the target species nest is found, uh, Wanapaksi uh, will find the uh, adopter or donor, and the adopter will pay the money to Wanapaksi to make sure that the breeding uh, of the target species as success by keeping it from uh, poaching activity and other disturbance. Uh, so far, the nest adoption has adopted uh, so many uh, birds uh, and nests, and also has uh, successfully um, uh, make um, many of uh, flag. Uh, uh, survive. So this is also has benefit for local community, especially for the bird keeper, for the nest keeper, for um, local uh, local government, and also institution like RT RW and also Katayawanak uh, Paksi itself. And from the nest adoption for the uh, targeted species, uh, it is um, 
as a good trend which there is there was increasing number of the threatened bird species and the individual too and hopefully for the next time uh, it will be more threatened bird species uh, nest uh, will be adopted so that the more nests can be detected the more adoption can be conducted and the more nest bird can be survived the next activity is uh, we uh, did strengthen uh, enforcement of the village regulation. And the firstly, uh, we did uh, our trap investigation, and the research shows that some last poacher from Chatimulyo have climbed to storm to stop poaching. But in other height, uh, the hand, high but uh, diversity of uh, in Chatimulyo has attracted poacher from another area to come. And we found uh, from the uh, social media in Facebook, uh, we found that uh, there is a group of a poacher, or poacher that one of the account uh, posted um, a poaching activity in Jatimulyo. You can see in the uh, above lab, it, uh, our poster. Uh, and, and to, uh, so we have to make a strategy to fight them and uh, uh, to encourage uh, protest enforcement. We have facilitated meeting among stakeholders to reach agreement about the protest enforcement procedure as well as how to implement it by all stakeholders. And all, all stakeholders uh, which come from the uh, come. Uh, come from uh, many uh, institutions like uh, the representative of all Hamlet in Chatimulyo, uh, Limnas, PPK, and the head of village. This is apparatus of the uh, village in Chatimulyo, and also police in a uh, sub district of uh, uh, Kirimulyo level. And all of them has received, uh, we have uh, reached uh, agreement about the communication network and have been uh, uh, we have a uh, same understanding about our role and for the next step uh, we will uh, yeah we will do some activity like to sustain the participatory bird monitoring of course and to promote bird watching based on ecotourism and also to focus nest bird adoption for the threatened bird species, uh, especially for the threatened song bird species. Thank you. Uh, feel free for any question. Thank you. And for everyone who want to donate for adoption, please contact by um, WhatsApp number or maybe by uh, email to Canopy Indonesia. This, uh, okay, thank you for uh, attention and I will stop uh, presentation. Thank you. Okay, <clears throat> thank you very much, Irfan. So it's very uh, interesting uh, story uh, from uh, Jatimulo village uh, in Yogyakarta. So if you have a questions, please put your questions uh, uh, in the chat box, yeah? And we will uh, have a, a discussion or we can uh, answer the questions uh, after the presentations. So now we will uh, listen the second uh, presentation uh, from uh, Indonesia also. So we will uh, invite uh, Al Halimata uh, Roshidi from Friends of the National Park uh, Foundation. Hali will tell you uh, about the conservations of Bali starling in Nusa Penida Island. So Hali, if you're uh, ready, time is yours. Uh, please keep in uh, 10 minutes for your presentation. Hali, please. Good afternoon, everyone. My name is Hali. I am a conservation coordinator for the Bali Starling Project by Friends of the National Park Foundation, or FNPF in Nusa Penida, Bali. FNPF was originally founded in 1997 
focusing in orangutan conservation in Borneo. Uh, after success in the program, our director was concerned from the step of Bali Starling, which leads uh, to him founding a center in Sapinga. Let me start the presentation by expla explaining other conservation cases focus. The Bali Starling. Bali Starling was first scientifically discovered in 1912 on the north coast of Bali. Since 1980s, uh, the species has been listed as a critical endangered by UCN. Even the climate to have little prospect to establish a, a wild population uh, in Bali. Currently, of its no range, it can only be found in West Bali National Park with a second insurgent population in Nusa Penida. One of the main causes uh, of its population decrease is poaching for the captive uh, bird trade. Uh, this is because the Bali starling is an uh, attractive bird with high value in the songbird trade. Our program hopes to also help with the silent forest campaign by conserving and increasing the starling population in the wild. I think we have involvement with the bird began in 2004 when we start a uh, dialogue with the local community in Nusa Penida to establish a population on the, the island. Nusa Penida was chosen mainly because of its similar uh, condition to Bali Starling original habitat as uh, an island. The relative isolation from the mainland is hoped to decrease chain of poaching. The dialogue culminated uh, with a release of 66 starlings, uh, mainly for, from Begawan Foundation and European Zoos. Between 2006 and 2008, uh, and the creation of Awik Awik, which is a traditional custom, uh, uh, is a traditional custom now to help uh, encourage local participants and discourage poaching. To this day, uh, Nusa Penida has the the only wild breeding population of Bali starling. The individuals in the population are of at least on its uh, fourth generation, uh, mainly as grand present were born in the wild. This, pre this pre represent an ecologically fit a population uh, adapt to the environment. As a thank you to the local community for their participation in protecting the bird, seeing as the species uh, is able to thrive uh, with a little treat from poaching. We help English class provide the fledglings and provide uh, help with organic farming, as well as help uh, introduce tourism to the island. In our effort uh, to keep the maintaining and growing the population on the, on the island, we are faced with uh, some issue. Uh, mainly the lack of the system uh, susta sustainable uh, next books uh, from them to breed. Uh, Bali starling is a species that nests in tree hollows, uh, most of the nesting holes were historically uh, created by woodpecker, which are not found uh, on the island. To help pro provide the nesting location, we create artificial, artificial mix box uh, from the music pipes and tree bark which are designed to eliminate natural next site. As of now, uh, we have a network uh, of 15 next box placed around the southwestern, southwestern uh, side of the island, which is uh, in the main range of the Bali Sardine. These next box are re regularly monitored. Yeah, this is the distribution. Here's a map of our next box location. Most of them are still clustered uh, around the original realist area in the temple, but uh, uh, it is growing. Since 2016, we have implemented a regular monitoring regime and recorded each encounter. Uh, this is the graph showing the data since 2019. We are we compared with bird encounter to number of monitoring. Uh, there's every month. Peak of uh, a counter always correspond with seasonal change in behavior. 
so by pigs uh, during the breeding uh, season in the December and in the height of summer where flocks of starling are often seen. Yeah, as mentioned before, uh, the peak of the body starling breeding season is between September and December every year, with each pair uh, able to breed between two until uh, three times a year, with up to four times for a, a few pairs. Another issue uh, we are starting to notice is the breeding rate observed does not uh, correspond with increase in population. In other words, we should we should be seeing more birds than we can as of now. In order to fully understand by checking uh, by checking active mix box and monitoring the breeding timeline timeline of each pair using an uh, endoscope camera. Yeah. This graph is showing the breeding records, uh, show what I have previously uh, mentioned where records uh, of X is always more than cheek and fledgling spout. While our next box network has been very successful, uh, it is not without it, uh, its own, own issue, but the main problem is affecting our next box are predators such as mice uh, and geckos with uh, eggs and pass, like, like ants and bees. These disturbances occupy next box uh, and make them unfollower for uh, the starling. In order to help support our efforts, uh, we have a volunteering program where volunteer can uh, volunteer can learn uh, the program where uh, about project and help with the daily monitoring as our expanding Nextbox network gets to be uh, to be mentioned regularly by staff, uh, and they also help with our regular Nextbox cleaning to ensure the Nextbox availability. And most importantly, their participant increase awareness for the uh, cost, particular, particularly among locals. In general, we always uh, try to keep uh, some spare and occupied uh, next box so they are always available for new pairs to access. To evaluate uh, our next box network, we monitor the ratio of bird encounters. Uh, per next box. As to hike uh, mean there is not enough next box available. On this graph, we can see uh, in the 2017, uh, when there are not any available uh, next box, the encounter rate becomes very high, which is not ideal for, for breeding. In the future, we plan to further research uh, whether low genetic diversity in the main cause of lower population observed as the current population is mainly descendants from less than uh, 10 individuals after a huge population drop in 2016. Uh, the main cause of this drop is not fully known uh, as prior to this were not regularly monitoring conduct, although poaching is inferred to be one of the coast. Uh, we also plan to conduct a regular population census to get a more accurate population count. This activity, which is a uh, plan to be held twice uh, a year in each season, uh, require a large amount of manpower as we need participants to record birth. Uh, occurrences in each next box at the same time, and we plan to use uh, this event to further promote the project by uh, by involving locals, volunteer, and bird enthusiasts from all over the world. Uh, we also plan to continue with our predator reduction effort uh, and start a regular habitat assessment to evaluate how change in the habitat affect the behavior and the population number. This goal and all of our other smaller plans require a lot of support. You can help support us by participating in uh, our volunteer program when where you can participate in our monitoring 
uh, and Bali Starling related activity such as net stock building and care and the Bali Starling experiments, as well as contribute to our community development activities. Um, we also provide bird watching tour service if you are uh, interested uh, uh, in seeing the starling or other bird in the Sapinida birds such as uh, black nap monarch, red chest fall pecker, chinar steep, uh, wild, 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 wild tropic bird, and another bird. As for our uh, population census, the, fir the first event is planned to be uh, held at the uh, end of the year, but it's still on the planning stage. Keep your eye out over the event on your special media page if you want to participate. I hope uh, my very short presentation has uh, give it, given everyone a small insight into your I hope my very short presentation uh, has given everyone a small insight into your project here in the second year. And thank you for your attention and good afternoon. Okay, so thank you very much, Holly. It's a nice presentation. This um, nice uh, picture also and data from your work in uh, Nusa Penida Island. Now we will have uh, about uh, 15 minutes to have uh, questions and answer. So if we would like to invite you if you have uh, any questions for the two, uh, three <laughs> uh, uh, presentations uh, today, uh, please you can uh, write on the chat box and so we will uh, collect and just uh, share to the speakers. So I think that we have uh, already uh, questions from uh, Nigel Collar. Uh, he has uh, like a two questions uh, for Irfan. So Irfan, um, there are two okay. questions uh, for you. Uh, if you uh, have the uh, yeah. chat box, but I can also uh, tell you the, the questions like uh, oh, you know, I have uh, read yeah. the, the okay so the you read already I will, uh, okay. yeah answer the question from Nigel Collar uh, yes. uh, how common is the poaching of nesting uh, songbird rather than dark uh, birds actually in uh, field in Indonesia in in Java uh, most of them are uh, take um take from the nest rather than uh trapping the dark bird because um many trapper uh prefer to look after the younger um bird than the adult because they can uh, be trained for uh, uh, the song like that and also this is more uh, this is more uh, 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 this is more cheaper and easy to do than uh, adult bird so that uh, this is far more uh, common than uh, trapping adult bird and for the second question from Nigel uh, how many are group like you are there uh, I think mm, there are not many it is still little uh, um, like this, but uh, actually there is also uh, initiation of the uh, conservation action for the songbird, but by another strategy. Uh, but uh, for this uh, sample in Jatimulyo, actually this is not all, all the, not only canopy which is uh, contribute to the program, but there are so many. Um, uh, organization that uh, support this uh, actually from Canopy, from Visa Indonesia, from uh, San Kutilang, and from uh, University, but watcher like a uh, but watcher group from uh, Yogyakarta, especially, and also from the um, uh, photographer, which is um, uh, often to come when they uh, call it by 
Kelly, the local hero which uh, always um, upload the uh, amazing bird in their uh, Facebook so that uh, we are uh, easy to uh, interaction with um, community, wider community by uh, social media like that. So um, uh, I think we will uh, yeah, open to uh, other area uh, to anybody who will uh, learn about uh, this um, uh, program uh, and uh, we will do uh, something the for the next. And I think that is the answer. Uh, and also, I want to uh, answer the third question from Serena Chang for, for me. How many nests are found? Uh, VS nests are that are support sponsored. What are the challenge with the getting sponsor? Um, uh, there are many birds species, uh, bird nests which are uh, uh, found, but uh, also um, many sponsor. But they uh, before um, uh, that they, uh, they always has a special a species to adopt adopt adopted. They have a special request. Uh, sometimes it's not the the our target species, uh, maybe like a uh, Javan kingfisher or uh, Javan song uh, sunbird, which is uh, more playful and interesting, interesting for them to adopt because the adoption is still open for uh, many birds, uh, not only the three-turn birds, but uh, hopefully for the next we will uh, get a target to more uh, extension for the um, for the triton bird species, so we can ask uh, if we can um, ask uh, the adopter to choose uh, the triton bird species as uh, their adoption. So thank you, think. thank you, Irfan. So before yeah. uh, you answer the other questions, uh, we would like to move to. Uh, questions uh, to Holly, so we we will have like uh, Irfan and Holly. So uh, not not uh, you know, Holly, can you answer the, some of the questions? I think the first question to you is come from uh, Jacqueline. Yeah, Misophilia is not native standing habitat and doesn't native woodpecker either, uh, and so uh, any realist plan will require uh require a lot of uh talk we currently hear talk about it but uh, will require uh, a lot of uh, prior research it was not a big problem actually now but uh, but because the awik awik was really respected and uh, the fact that a lot of important people participate uh, in really increase the protection as well I think, can you just uh, answer one more question from uh, Bertie? Yeah, please. That's for, uh, to Halia. Yeah? Could you further explain the predator abatement plans? Currently, we are evaluate, uh, evaluating uh, our next box. Uh, this one from uh, uh, Miles. Uh, we are adding new uh, treatment to the next box with a grass uh, to prevent the geckos. Uh, now we can move again to uh, some questions. So Irfan, Irfan, can you answer the questions uh, from Agus Kusmawanto? Uh, how is the formula for calculating the cost of the bird nest adoption scheme? So can you answer that one? Okay. Okay. All right now we have uh, we have arranged. Uh, the um, adoption by three priority. Uh, the first priority is uh, one million point uh, one point five million rupiah, and the second priority is 
one million rupiah and the third um, priority is um, eight uh, hundred rupiah and how to formulate uh, the calculation and uh, the the all of return bird species in is in our uh, first uh, priority so every adopter can choose uh, the bird they want to adopt and how to calculating the cost is uh, uh, we will measure how many uh, how uh, the everyday uh, monitoring and also um, the we have also have a responsibility for the landowner for the uh, local government also to 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 make um, yeah some benefit for the local community so that uh, uh, beside the um, the activity in the field we also added the uh, some um, um, some of the uh, fund for the landowner for the nest uh, nest founder, which is the first time he found the nest. They will get the donate also, and also the donation uh, will be spread for Katehawanapaksi uh, also for their. Um, um uh for their um development so uh the formula collocation is about uh, uh combine of the field um expense and also um small part of them uh, will go to land owner and bookkeeper and also for um yeah for katawanapaksi and uh, local government of course and also land owner like that uh, for the detail we can uh, discuss in another discussion thank you okay thank you Irfan. so if anybody would like to interest uh, to know the the nest adoptions you can contact uh, canopy uh, indonesia and uh, you can get uh, more information to the website or the uh, contact uh, number. So now we go to the last uh, uh, or the end of the, the session. So I will ask uh, Hali, this is your uh, last opportunity to answer, I think the two questions, the last two questions uh, for you. Uh, Hali, please, uh, can we just uh, keep uh, simple in the... Uh, answer question uh yes we have to keep uh, putting for next box so far uh, we already see about uh two more on sleeping tree but because our uh, monitoring is uh largely on next box we cannot uh tr uh trade them all and then the next question uh, i will answer off. Yeah, because uh, it's similar condition uh, and before it was very isolated uh, with minimal uh, tourists, we are uh, lucky that we are no, uh, no, no known and it appears the birds are not uh, affect, uh, affected by, uh, by tourism. Yeah, uh, thank you, Holly. I think this one... Okay, so this that's a question about the the recent uh, for Nusa Penida Islands uh, for Bali starting re reintroduction project. So just a short uh, answer about that, and then you can uh, and we can we can we can uh, finish the question and answer session. Thank you, Holly. Time is yours. Yeah, I think uh, we have uh, we have it evaluated if we have a problem or not. Yeah, we have to evaluate if we have a problem or not, I think. About the genetics. But this is the end of the questions and answers. So thank you very much for 
all of the participants about uh, your participations and uh, about the questions. Thank you very much. And now, uh, before we uh, hand over to Vivian, so I would like to invite James. Uh, James will share about uh, the Indonesian version of birth of Indonesian archipelago. So James, time is yours. Thanks, Shanti. Hi, everybody. Um, yeah, after a few years of uh, blood, sweat and tears, um, our little army of contributors, uh, translators, donors, um, editors, artists, uh, writers, we've finally been able to put together the Indonesian language um, edition of the Birds of the Indonesian Archipelago, um, covering all the way from Sumatra, all the way through to Wallacea. Um, we're fully, it's been uh, fully funded by our wonderful donors, including OBC. Um, it's currently at the printers as well. So we're hoping it's gonna be available at the Burung shop um, from the autumn. Uh, thanks to our donors, we've been able to fully fund 500 copies that are gonna to go to um, NGOs, government offices, universities, libraries, um, conservationists, selected individuals. Um, and it follows much in line with the English edition. It's gonna have almost 3000 illustrations covering our barley starling, Java and blue flycatcher. Um, and the text has also been fully translated. Um, we've been able to change it slightly from the English edition to make it more readable and Indonesian orientated. So we've done away with all the extra limital information and taxonomic information. So it's really concentrated for Indonesians, both um, in education, ornithologists, birders, and law enforcement as well. It's gonna be a tool that can be used for um, the bird trade, all being well. Um, so if you would like to also help, you can, fund uh, any copies that you want to, to give to any organizations or individuals. You can get in touch with me, Yanti, OBC, or go to the Burung shop and we'll be happy to help. Thanks very much. Well, thank you, uh, James. Uh, hopefully that we can see the boards very soon. Uh, so thank you very much. I offer to Vivian. So Vivian, that's yours. Thank you, Yanti, and thank you, James, and the wonderful speakers, um, Arvan and, and Hali. Um, thanks also for the participation from all of you. And if you wanted to uh, support the, uh, our work to tackle the Asia songbird crisis and help to save these beautiful songbirds in Asia, you can make a donation um, here in the link and share it in the chat box. And uh, you can also support us by being a OBC member. Every new member helps OBC to do more conservation work in our region. And also please um, join us and, uh, for the next webinar and we will bring you more of our conservation work. See you again, bye.